In uh, Ephesians chapter 6, we find a little place at verses 10 through 18 where the Apostle Paul comes and starts telling the saints. This is one of his later letters, and he's really, and he's writing such a great summary of what it means to walk in the faith. And he ends, he ends this beautiful letter, which we've studied in times past, with this thought. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, that you may be able to stand. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So not only do we withstand, we stand up. We stand for, with the Lord. And he, we do so because we're clothed in an understanding of what is going on in our lives, what is going on in our walk with Christ. That it, it is an intentional stand. Don't be overcome. Don't lay down. Don't bend over. Don't worship other gods. Stand and withstand. Because we are at war, and we're at war against an adversary that is not flesh and blood, but is maneuvering in people and cultures and opportunities to bring war against the saints. Right? I mean, we're, if we've been around a little bit, we know that. He, we forget oftentimes who our adversary is. I bet when we're in trouble, most of the time, we, have, we are told, we have these thoughts that we're the adversary to God. That if I could just do it better, if I would just do it right, if I would just get my discipline together, if I would just do my devotions every day, it's like God can't bless me because I'm the culprit. But that is not the truth. Any, even wrestling with that is pleasing to God because it demonstrates a willingness to want to walk with God. But, so, but it's the adversary behind the scenes that is maneuvering and undermining and trying to break momentum and, and ruin things. So the Apostle Paul says, know him, know his wiles, his schemes and his craftiness, and stand against him. That's what the invitation is. And then he goes through the armament that we've been offered to wear, which we should have an understanding of, because uh, those things, it really ends up being what Jesus has done in this word, who he is and what he has provided is actual equipment for me to stand in the day of trial. Like this isn't a story. This is filled with actual equipping, right? It's, it's, it isn't just, um, okay, put on the helmet of salvation. Okay, I'm saved. No, it is put it on. Take the helmet of salvation and assemble it over your mind to withstand the thoughts that you're not good enough, you're not approved, you're not accepted, it's not going to work for you, these things, it's always been like this, it's never going to change. The helmet of salvation is, because I understand how Jesus, his blood paid for all and cleansed me from all unrighteousness and has put me in good standing with God, I can just repeat that and say, those are the thoughts I'm going to think, and I am now withstanding the onslaught of the adversary. But I have to do that. I actually have to engage in a pushback on the adversary. So I can't coast. I need to really stand up. We're in an hour, I believe, that if we stand against the adversary, we will be royally blessed and see tremendous promotion. If we run from that, we will be overcome. And we're overcomers. We're not to be overcome. We're to learn the things of the Spirit. We're to learn the things that God has for us. If I were to put out there, what would be the most important thing that we could probably do in this hour? It would be learn what you think you already know. For real, make it real. You agree, praying in the Spirit is speaking the mysteries of God. Well, then pray in the Spirit. Don't think about it. Don't agree to it. 
Sit down, take some time, and do it. And let God begin to flood your understanding with things you didn't know before and that you really are praying the mysteries of God. When it comes to putting on the armor of God, that we would recognize that we do this to withstand the things of the adversary. This little passage of Scripture in Ephesians is a summarized conclusion of the practical side of Ephesians. This is what you know to be true. Now, clothe yourself in it. Read it, believe it, clothe yourself in it. Clothe yourself in the righteousness of God. Clothe yourself with the shield of faith. Believe that God is performing his word in your life even when you don't see results. Put up the shield. Believe it. And when the adversary comes and shoots something at you saying it's not going to work for you, you're special. Your problems are way too much. It's not going to work for you. You just put up that shield and say, I don't receive that dart into my heart. It is not going to find a home here. I believe that God is no respecter of persons, but I need to know the word because faith is linked to the word. So if I'm going to put up a shield, I got to know the promises of God. And that, and when I recite those, I am deflecting those darts. They don't get into my heart. The word's in my heart. And so we want to hold true to those things. Right? So, if a person were to uh, uh, clothe themselves in the armor of God. Now, I do want to suggest that you let the Lord show you how he wants you to do this. What I mean is, it's not a ritual. You don't, oh, I, I'm five minutes into my day and I didn't put on the armor of God. Well, then, you're, then now, are you being motivated by fear? Can, uh, and I know people say, well, you should put on the armor of God every day. Probably, but at the same time, why don't sleep with it on? I don't know. Don't take it off. Just wear it. Just always wear the armor of God. Just and when you find that you're struggling in an area, remind yourself: No, I am wear, keeping my helmet of salvation on, or I am keeping the blessed plate of, plate of righteousness on. I don't behave that way because I am wearing righteousness. So I choose not to behave that way because I remind myself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I can live according to what he's asking me to do. And anything less than that is to believe something that isn't true. 